Hello there. So today's lesson is going to be on positive and negative values and specifically how do we apply our operations to them such as adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. What I'd like to do please is start off with a rules and our steps and then I'm going to split this into two different lessons so make sure you look for the second part of this lesson so that we can see this in a movie file. So let's look at our first definition. Okay, the first and only definition that we have today is actually absolute value. What I need you to know is that the symbol for absolute value is actually two vertical bars. And what that is telling us to do is to say, what is the distance from zero? And whatever that distance may be are the steps that we're taking away from zero. Now there are a couple things other than just the definition that I need you to know about absolute value. First of all, it is like a grouping symbol. You need to get one number inside of it to be able to do what you need to do. So before you say, what is the distance from zero, you've got to make sure that you get one number inside of that. We also know that once you say the distance of from 0 to negative 3 is 3 steps, what we're doing here is we're saying that the result is always positive. So just be careful that you keep that in the back of your mind, but be warned on the steps that we're going to take as that happens. So if you look at our examples down below, you'll see that we have the absolute value of 3. Now notice the vertical bars and how it looks in a typed manner, but also know that we're going three steps from zero in the positive direction. But again, the answer is still three. We've gone three steps from zero. If I look at the second one, from zero to negative three, I still have gone three steps. The challenge example is this last one, where it looks like the middle problem inside of the absolute value. I have one number inside of it, but outside of that absolute value, there is a negative that we're setting it up to look at as an after the fact. So what we have to do is say, well, what is the absolute value of negative 3 and say that it's 3? But then what happens is that we have to then, as we look at that in parentheses, keep the negative out front and say, oh, well, what's the opposite sign of a positive 3? And our answer is negative 3. So just be careful that if something is outside of the absolute value, it's done after you say and handle the absolute value bars. So now let's talk about the rules that we're going to follow. The first rule that we're going to talk about is if you're adding positive and negative values. The key thing that I remember, the way that I was taught, is that if our signs are the same, then what we have to do is add the numbers and we're going to keep the sign. We're going further into that negative direction or that positive direction. So if you look at our first example, we'll notice that the sign of a term is in front of it. So the first number that we see is a negative 3. Inside of the parentheses, if we were to follow order of operations, we also have one number. There is no power and in front of the parentheses there's nothing to change it. So that means that number is going to stay at negative 5. Now my abbreviation for signs are the same are just two S's, signs the same. So we're going to add the numbers 3 plus 5 and we're going to keep that negative sign which is where we end up. And obviously if you look at the second example we know if we take positive 4 and we add to it 7 we get a value of 11. So as you're looking at the rules for adding just remember signs are the same, abbreviation SS, and that means we add the numbers, keep the sign. And just be very careful to always remember that the sign of a term is in front of it. The next rule that I'd like to touch upon is our subtracting rule. And as you look at this rule, what I like to focus on, or the way I was taught, is that if our signs are different, I'll abbreviate as SD, then that means different means difference, which means subtract some numbers. But we're going to keep the sign of the larger absolute. And that word larger absolute means which one is furthest away from zero. And typically if we work subtraction in a vertical manner, it's the one that we would put on top. Now I have four distinct looks here that I want to go through with you. 
Notice always that the sign of a term is in front of it and that I'm following order of operations. So if we look at the first term, the first example, notice that we have a negative 4. The sign of that 4 is in front of it as negative. In front of the 5, we have a plus, so that means it's positive. So here my signs are different. So what we would first say is which one is further from 0, negative 4 or 5? And obviously the 5 is, and it's positive. Because my signs are different, I'm going to subtract, so 5 take away 4 is 1. And the sign of my pos of 5 was a positive, so my answer is positive 1. If you look at the second example, which I'll color coat and do a different color, we notice that we start off with a positive 6 because there's nothing in front of it to change it. Then if you notice in the parentheses, I have one number. Following order of operations, there is no outside power. And there's nothing in front to change what's inside. So my 3 actually in parentheses here is just the parentheses are just protecting the negative. So yet again, my signs are different. So which one is furthest from 0? The 6 obviously is furthest from 0. And so what we're going to do, subtract our numbers. And then the larger absolute is the one on top. And again, that result is positive. Now if we continue with the next one, the next one, if we follow the same pattern, the 4 is positive. The 2, if the sign of a term is in front of it, is negative. But most of you would just look at this problem and say, oh, well, 4 take away 2 is 2, and I'm done. And that's the way I would want you to handle this example. The example or the last one that we're looking at is the one that you need to make sure that you're most familiar with. If you look at this example, we have following order of operations, one number in the parentheses. There's nothing in the power position that's going to change the parentheses. But if you look in front, notice that there is a subtract there. And what that subtract sign tells us to do for what follows is to say what is the opposite sign of a negative 3. And whatever you say that answer is, which is a positive 3, is what you write. You don't add anything else in. That subtract in front says the opposite sign of a negative 3 is a positive 3, and you write what you say. Now if we assess this particular example, notice that my 5 is negative. The sign of a term is in front of it. Notice now that my 3 is positive. So for signs different, we're going to subtract. And notice that I put the larger absolute, which is negative 5, on top, but I'm still subtracting my numbers. But this time, my larger absolute is negative, so my final answer is negative 2. I'm going to pause the rules right now and get ready to do the multiplication and division. And just after I pause, nah. All right, I'm going to finish the rules with multiplication and division, and then we're going to pause the video to go on to the second slide with our examples. All right. For our rules for multiplication and division, if you look at this problem, what you're going to notice is that if we see only multiplication and division, if you do not see brackets and parentheses with plus or minuses in there, if you only see multiplication and division, then the rule is an odd number of negatives, like one negative, three negatives, or five negatives, gives you a negative answer. An even number of negatives, two negatives, four negatives, or six negatives, will give you a positive answer. So if you're looking at the example down below, notice following order of operations, we have one number in the parentheses. Notice that there's no outside power. And in front of it, it's not a plus sign or a minus, it's a multiplication. So that means I need to count up my negatives. I have two negatives, which even number makes a positive answer, and then 30 times 2, which is 60. If we look at the second example, I have two parentheses, one number in each, no outside power. But in front, we have only multiplication and division. So we're first going to deal with the negatives. And notice that there are three negatives that we're seeing here. And I'll color code those. So that's an odd number, which means my answer is going to be negative. The next thing I need to do is divide, and I need to go left to right. So 27 divided by 3 is 9, and 9 times 9 is 81. So what I'd like you to do now, please, is look for the positive and negative video clip with our examples, and we're going to try to use these rules together.
Please remember that this is in part one and part two tonight.